There are many garden pests that will do harm to your plants. Aphids, beetles, mites, potato beetles, stink bugs, moth larva, the list goes on. However, it can be very easy to assume that all insects are bad, but that would be a big mistake. So in this video, I want to share five bugs that are your friend in the garden. I'll avoid the obvious ones like honeybees, bumblebees, and ladybugs, and focus on some less known insects that you might find in your garden. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about some ways that you can attract all of these beneficial insects to your garden. Before I get into it, if you're interested in learning more about gardening, sign up for our email newsletter. In the link in the description below, we send out a weekly email helping you do a better job out in the garden. So jumping right in, the first insect that you shouldn't do harm to in your garden are ladybug larvae. Now I know I said I wouldn't be talking about ladybugs, but ladybug larvae don't look anything like the very familiar adult form of this insect. However, the larvae are actually even more beneficial than the adults because they're much more ravenous as they're growing and their diet is primarily made up of aphids. So if you don't like seeing aphids all over your plants, ladybug larvae will come in to help. So obviously you don't wanna do harm to adult ladybugs because they're gonna be bringing in the ladybug larvae laying small orange eggs on the undersides of leaves. These quickly hatch into small black sort of arrow shaped insects, which are the larvae. These will grow over the course of a few weeks as they feed on aphids and sometimes other small insects like mealybugs and even small caterpillars as we have seen in the past. So get yourself familiar with the look of ladybug larvae and leave them be. The next bug I wanna talk about is pretty well despised, at least in the household, but you definitely should consider it a friend in the garden and those would be spiders. Spiders almost never eat plant material and instead they're predatory, feeding on things like grasshoppers, beetles, and aphids. Some spiders might feed on pollen or nectar from the flowers on your plants, but again, they're not gonna harm the actual plants themselves. The only situation where you might wanna get rid of a spider in the garden is if it's a known dangerous spider like a brown recluse or maybe even a black widow, depending on where you live. But by and large, spiders are a good thing to see on your plants. Now this next bug I wanna talk about is definitely something that you might be tempted to squash if you didn't know what you were looking at, and those would be hoverfly larvae. These start off as a sort of translucent, almost grub-like looking bug on your plant, and much like ladybug larvae, they feed on aphids and other small pests on your plants as they're growing into adulthood. The adult form of hoverflies looks almost like a tiny little bee, and they're known to sort of hover in midair while they're feeding. To attract in the adults, which will lay their larvae in your garden, we found that alyssum seems to work very well. We always have swarms of hoverflies feeding on our sweet alyssum plants, so that's a great way to get them into your garden. The next bug you might be tempted to squash in your garden are lacewings. Now, if you're in the commercial gardening business, you've probably heard of green lacewings because they're widely used as a natural pest control method in greenhouses. So this is obviously a good thing. Green lacewings, both in larval and adult forms, will feed on soft-bodied insects like aphids, mites, and other pests. Now, green lacewings will lay eggs on your plants, which are very characteristic. They sort of dangle underneath leaves off of string-like strands with the egg on the very end. Now, the larvae of green lacewings are probably the scariest of the bugs on this list because they're sort of sharp and they have pointed edges all around, but you should get used to them in the garden and know that they're definitely your friend. The adult form can actually be hard to spot because they are in fact green and they're sort of long and slender with wings. So you should be very happy if you see any form of green lacewing in the garden and do your best to sustain those populations. Now this last group of bugs that I wanna talk about definitely has a negative connotation similar to that of spiders, and those are wasps. If you're anything like me, when you hear the word wasp, you immediately think of yellow jackets, which are definitely a pest. However, wasps are actually a broad category of insects, most of which will not harm humans unless you disturb them, and can actually benefit your garden in many ways. For one, wasps will actually pollinate many of your flowers. They'll be feeding on nectar and pollen from your flowering plants, and they can actually help pollinate those flowers, leading to better fruit sets. Wasps can also help keep pest populations under control, and one of the most famous examples of this is the predatory wasp that kills tomato hornworms by laying its eggs in the actual caterpillar. 
In fact, they're considered so beneficial that if you find a tomato hornworm with the eggs laid in its back, you wanna leave it alone so that the wasps can hatch and the population can grow. Now this example is definitely a little bit gross, but if the end game is improving your gardens, then you should know that wasps are mostly friendly. A few other honorable mentions that aren't exactly bugs, but are definitely things you shouldn't do harm to in the garden. Number one are bats, which feed on mosquitoes and other pests in the garden. Another are snakes, which can feed on pests and rodents in the garden. And lastly are centipedes, which look a little bit scary again, but you shouldn't do harm to them because they're mostly predatory against bad bugs. Now, if you're seeing a bug in your garden that you don't recognize, I highly recommend using an app which can help identify insects. We use one that's called Picture Insect, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. You simply snap a picture of the bug, and then hopefully it identifies it correctly, and you can compare it to other users' pictures to make sure it's a right match. Now, a couple of tips for attracting all of these beneficials that we've talked about in this video. The most important thing you can do is plant flowers in your garden. Most insects are attracted to flowers, and the greater variety of flowers that you plant in your garden among your vegetable crops, the better. We like to have a good mix of native flowering plants and also just some beautiful flowers like zinnias that we can grow alongside our veggies. And another important thing to keep in mind is when you have aphids on your plant, try to remember that that's the primary diet of ladybug larvae and many other beneficial insects. So by resisting the urge to kill all of the aphids with pesticides, you'll actually be inviting more of those beneficial insects into your garden by leaving them alone. Every year we seem to learn about a new couple of bugs that may seem like bad guys at first glance, but are actually beneficial. Thanks for watching Geeky Greenhouse and I'll see you next time.